everyone, and welcome to Biology Professor. Today we're talking about the law of dominance. Now, in the 1860s, there was a man named Gregor Mendel, and he worked out several laws of inheritance. That is, laws that describe the pattern of inheritance of biological features, which we now know as genes. And he did this by working with pea plants. And in his work with pea plants, he determined three laws. The law of segregation, the law of independent assortment, and the law of dominance. In this video, we're focused on this third one, the law of dominance. However, if you're interested in learning about these other two laws, see my other videos on those topics. Now, with the law of dominance, you have to remember that there are two different types of alleles. Now, alleles are alternative forms of a gene. Some alleles are dominant. They're called dominant because they mask the other allele, called the recessive allele. So, for example, in Mendel's pea plant, he noticed that there were two types of flower color, purple and white. The allele for purple flower color masked the allele for white flower color. Thus, the purple allele was dominant, the white was recessive. And he noticed this with several other traits as well. Now, the law of dominance states that an organism with at least one dominance allele and remember that each organism can have two, one from the mother and one from the father. And so as long as the organism has at least one dominant allele, they will display the dominant phenotype. Remember that phenotype just refers to the organism's physical characteristics. So if we go back to the example of flower color in the pea plants, as long as the organism has at least one allele for the purple color, its flowers will be purple. So if it has two dominant alleles, it's going to be purple. If it has one dominant and one recessive allele, it's going to be purple. Only will it be white if it has two recessive alleles. So that is the law of dominance. And we can easily illustrate this with a Punnett square. Now, if you're interested in learning more about Punnett squares, for example, how they're used with monohybrid crosses, dihybrid crosses, and test crosses, see my videos on each of those three subjects. But now, for this Punnett square, we're using the standard convention, which is that a capital letter indicates a dominant allele, and a lowercase letter indicates a recessive allele. So, Take this example where we have two parents. The parents are both heterozygous. Remember that that means they have two different alleles. So one dominant and one recessive. One dominant and one recessive. If they had two of the same alleles, either two dominant or two recessive, that's called being homozygous. Now let's fill in the Punnett square. Remember that with each of these squares, we fill in the one allele that comes from the mother and the one allele that comes from the father. Here's what that looks like. And remember when filling in the Punnett squares, the normal convention is that whenever you have a heterozygous individual, the dominant allele, so the capital A letter, is written first. Now, let's go back to this point of the law of dominance. An organism with at least one, meaning one or two, so at least one dominant allele will display the dominant phenotype. So, which of these possibilities will display the dominant phenotype? Well, this one will because it has two dominant alleles. So will these other two because they have one dominant allele. So of the four possibilities, three display the dominant phenotype. And the remaining one is two recessive alleles, so it displays the recessive phenotype. 
And you see these numbers here, three dominant phenotype to one recessive phenotype. This is that three to one ratio that you learn about when learning about monohybrid crosses. So that is it for today's lesson on the law of dominance. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned a lot and we will see you next time here at Biology Professor.